Time for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by Talking Rocks Cavern. Explore the beauty above and below ground at Talking Rocks Cavern. The Springfield Green County Park Board reminding you to go play and Roto-Rooter Plumbing and Drain Service. Call Southwest Missouri's best plumber today for a free estimate. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Forheads. Well, good morning to you. Good to be with you again. We are one week away from Christmas now, which is nuts. Um, I'm happy to be back in, uh, in Missouri, where I belong. Uh, I'll tell you about my trip where I was last week coming up in just a little bit, but, uh, and, and a highlight of, of our weekend, I think as a family, <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you about that coming yeah. up. But first we'll, we'll do some news. Every time you say Missouri, I feel like you're about to announce some sort of like political run. And it's funny because people ask me, I've had now two people ask me from the general public, people I do not know, does Ethan actually call it Missouri? <laughs> I'm like, he's interviewed a politician or two in his day. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, anyway, now he just thinks it's hilarious. Sometimes I do, just for fun. Um, All right, here is a look at the news. The car of a man that has been missing for a decade was just found in Camden County. Apparently, a man was flying a drone and spotted a car in a small lake. Police were contacted and found the car. The missing man was Donnie Irwin, who disappeared in December of 2013 at the age of 59. He has not been seen since. Police there are now searching that area for Mr. Irwin's remains. Wow. Uh, The developers behind a plan to build an apartment building with shops and restaurants in the corner of Sunshine and National just went back to the drawing board. Uh, What they came up with was just rejected by Springfield Planning and Zoning Commission. The latest plan was for a food hall with indoor and outdoor pickleball courts. Um, Yeah, the developers are currently being sued by the residents of the University Heights neighborhood, some of them who don't want the original plan. Uh, of the apartment building with retail and restaurant space on the lower level. So that saga continues. Uh, I mean, it looks like the developers are going to keep on keeping on perhaps until there's something that works. uh, Obviously they've, they've, uh, they've gone back to the drawing board a couple of times and tried to make uh, some amendments to their, their design and their plan because they got a lot invested. They, they bought a lot of property there and they need to develop something. Uh, That's their vantage point uh neighbors are concerned about not in my backyard and uh too much traffic in that area that would uh they say take away from what is a a great neighborhood feel at university heights so yeah it is a very established neighborhood that's the truth but yeah i don't know if something is going there um it looks like it is but the question is what so back to the drawing board they go I guess so. And, and meanwhile, that court case about the original design continues. So that still could happen. Uh, we'll be watching it. It's like something new every every month or so at this point, sometime sooner. Uh, then there's this. You don't hear much about it the, uh, these days, but the war in Ukraine rages on. Springfield-based Convoy of Hope has been working to help evacuees in different countries now uh, and delivering relief supplies to Ukrainians still in the country of Ukraine on a regular basis several times a week since the war started nearly two years ago. In February, it'll be two years, which is nuts. Uh, Just recently, one of our partner groups was loaded up with supplies, taking them to survivors inside Ukraine when they were hit by a Russian drone. And there is, I mean, there's incredible dash cam video of this happening that we have now. Uh, If you'd like to see it, you can go to Convoy of Hope's Facebook page, Instagram page, see it on X. Uh, Just look up Convoy of Hope. You can see that video as it happens. It's just unbelievable. And maybe the the most uh, miraculous part about this whole story is that the, the, the van was destroyed. Two people inside it were fine. They were unhurt. It looks crazy because the van, which looks like a very thick metal, heavy duty van, it looks in the video like there's just shrapnel. And yet the people are unharmed. I mean, it's truly... I think it's what I would call like a bona fide miracle because that's crazy once you see the video. I, I agree because I mean it's think about how difficult it is to destroy a van and then how easy it is to destroy a human flesh. With, with with yeah, flesh. Everything can fly through flesh, yet it didn't. These two these two people were were okay. And on top of that, all of the product that they were delivering was unharmed, unhurt. Uh, so they were able to still get that product 
to people inside Ukraine. It's, a, it's an amazing story. So I would suggest you take a look at it uh, on Convoy of Hope's Facebook, Instagram, or X pages. It's, yeah, it's, you got to see it for yourself. Yeah, truly. Then there's this closer to home. A protest is planned for tomorrow night, uh, right before the Springfield Public Schools Board meeting. The protest is being organized by the Springfield National Education Association. The subject of that protest is teachers and some others. Uh, uh, the, they're, they're protesting uh, student behavior in schools and concerns over what they say is a lack of discipline. Um, the SPS superintendent, Granita Latham, uh, created a new student uh, discipline plan in the spring, you may recall. But some teachers are now arguing that the district isn't enforcing it. Uh, to their liking. So there will be a protest tomorrow and and no doubt more to come on that story. Yep, much more, I'm sure. Uh, they're not glamorous, but they are necessary. And uh, yeah, college campuses, it seems like often lack parking. And that is not going to be the case anymore at Ozarks Technical Community College. They are improving and expanding parking lots at the Springfield location, the Springfield campus off Chestnut Expressway. That school spending $2.2 million on the project. Uh, this is what we're learning. They will demolish five empty houses on Pythian Street and Hampton Avenue. Work will start on the new parking lot in the next several <clears throat> weeks. Should be ready to go by August of 2024 for that semester of school. And all right, all the this is the students an, rejoice. That's right. I remember, I mean, parking was an issue at my university, yeah, right. um, you know, a million it's years always an ago. Issue. And, yeah. uh, but also, Springfield is much more, you know, their student population at OTC certainly is much more transient. I would park my car and not get in my car for like a month at a time. So, because I walked everywhere, even to work, you know, so, um, Yes, they need parking because they are coming and going always at OTC. Um, okay, now to this. This is an El Nino year for the U.S. The experts just updated their predictions saying this would be a historically strong El Nino winter for the U.S. Uh, not so much, though, in southwest Missouri. So not too shabby here, I guess. Uh, for us, they say that it looks like precipitation uh, should be about the same as a normal winter. Nothing more than normal, uh, but our temperatures could be warmer than normal winters. And I would say we are at December 18th Yeah, and it's been pretty nice. I think yesterday on my <clears throat> way home from church, my um, little thermometer in the van was at 60 degrees. I don't so that was crazy. Uh, I don't think that's accurate, but I get the point. If, I know because the van when does run a little warm, I think, but it was it was very, very pleasant. Uh, anyway, so we'll see how it plays out. But for those who m may not know, El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. The Nino. Yeah, I think everybody knows that. It's Spanish for the Nino. <laughs> Ethan wrote that and thought it was hilarious. And I'm you pulled sure. Elisa Rose. Did you pull Elisa Rose and just see it? Just <laughs> yeah. I, what's funny is I did pull Elisa Rose, um, which if you're, if you know, you know, bomb in the bathroom. If not, look it up. Just look it up. Do yourself a favor. You'll laugh for weeks. Um, I did. But what's funny is I actually did read the first two sentences of that story and I'm like, I already know this. And so <laughs> I didn't read the last one. Nice. Well played. All right. You're moving welcome. on. You're welcome. <clears throat> well, Kansas City Chiefs got back on the win column over the weekend, but. The game against New England Patriots did little, I think, to comfort fans worried about the Chiefs' play this late in the season. The Chiefs won 27-17 against the struggling Patriots, who are now 3-11 and on the season. So uh, the blowout didn't happen like it could have, maybe should have. Uh, the Chiefs' record is now 9-5 and on the year. Uh, meanwhile, Coach Andy Reid was found fined one hundred thousand dollars, and quarterback Patrick Mahomes fined fifty thousand dollars for publicly criticizing the officiating following last week's loss to the Buffalo Bills. They couldn't hide from that. It was pretty, yeah. it was pretty vocal. Yeah, it was pretty vocal. But it's interesting that to, I mean, the NFL has to protect the integrity of the organization, so I guess that's what happens. But I was a little surprised, to be honest with you, only because you know, freedom of speech is a thing. So I was like, well, that's interesting. Well, that you, you know, know, I was, I was surprised that. that Reed got fined double what Mahomes got fined because Mahomes was, he was going off. Right. Off. And but Reed is the leader. I mean, I think that yes. it's the 
integrity of the organization to say, you know, Patrick Mahomes is subject to his leadership. And so the leadership is going to take the bigger brunt of that because they're the leader and leaders lead. And well, yeah, are. yeah, that's clearly what happened. And a hundred thousand dollars. Here's the thing is Andy Reed could have nipped it with Patrick. He could have, mm, I don't know. Not in that moment. Patrick was fit to be tied. Uh, but not in the moment, but I'm talking the days in the days following. Well, the days following, he apologized. He said he shouldn't have done it. It was the it was in in the moment that he was out of control. Yeah. Um, but it uh, sends a message to Reed because a hundred thousand dollars for him is a, is a, it hurts a lot more than than fifty or a hundred for Patrick. They they make much different dollar amounts. Yeah. But not that Reed's struggling. Right. He's done well. Uh, I know. Okay. I always wonder when, when organizations <clears throat> or people, you know, who are, you know, millionaires, when they get fined, do they feel that? Have you ever wondered that? You know what I'm saying? Or like whenever a really wealthy person like gives to, I don't know, charity or something, like, do they feel like I always want, like, do they feel that? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Well, maybe I someday mean, we'll know, but maybe someday our ship is coming in and we're going to know what it feels like. It's, but. I mean, it's different for, for different people. Everybody makes yeah. a different amount. So the amount that you give can hurt you or not hurt you, but can affect your lifestyle or not. Right. Depending yeah. on, it all depends. The widow's right. might, man. She felt it. She but felt we're still it, reading about her two year, rewarded, two thousand years right. later. It's amazing. Um, uh, okay, I guys. Oh, what? What, is, what are you doing? Going on. It's me. I'm doing the story. Right. No, it's me. Anyway, Mayim Bielik, I hope I said her oh. name right. Ethan knows her as Blossom. Um, she is Bialik. out. Bialik. Bialik. She is um, out now as Jeopardy host. She had been sharing that role with former champion Ken Jennings since last year, following the death of longtime host Alex Trebek. Uh, Bialik. Did I say it right? Bialik, yeah. Blossom. Just call her Blossom. That's who she is. Uh, she says the owners of the show have informed her that she has been relieved of her duties. Uh, in her Instagram post announcing the news, she pointed out how honored she was to have been nominated for an Emmy Award for hosting this year. That was a shot at uh, Sony, who I think owns the show. I mean, she was saying, basically, so I get nominated for an Emmy as best host and you get rid of me? Hey, television is a subjective business. I know it is. So they don't care if you've been nominated for an Emmy or not. That's true. Um, That's true. Yeah. Because you can get, you can be very good at your job, get nominated or even win an Emmy, but still not be well received by the audience. True. Both of those things true. can be true. So. That is true. Okay. Uh, I know many of you were, uh, were really wondering last week where Ethan was because the show is not nearly. I'm pretty sure only I good. was wondering where Ethan was. They were <laughs> fine, but I was like, "I, folks, I don't know when he's coming back." <laughs> uh, well, you you knew when I was coming back. Uh, I went to Las Vegas to see you two in concert at the Sphere, which is the most advanced, most incredible venue in all the world. It costs 2.3 billion dollars to build this thing. It's just a, a giant globe just off the strip, so it's a big circle. Outside is the world's largest LED screen, 1.2 million external LED lights. And inside, as you look at the stage down on the front, behind the stage is a screen that goes all the way up around you, like an IMAX, but bigger. Uh, and then behind you, because we were, we were standing down right in front of the stage, which was a really cool place to be. Behind you was uh, like a straight up balcony <clears throat> of 20,000 people. It was unbelievable. If you just look up you two at the sphere and, uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's, it's mind boggling how they did it. Uh, one, there are 167,000 speakers in there that beam audio to each seat. So, so like they did each a, a, individual seat. They do. It's they wild. do. And they, they did a demonstration, uh, out in the lobby that we had to pay to go see, but we did it. And you stand in one place and you hear something, somebody speak in Mandarin Chinese. You take five steps over and you hear it in English, but you can't hear when you're over in the Chinese place, you can't hear the English one. And when you, and you take another five steps, it's Spanish and then it's Ukrainian or, you know, it's just nuts. And they did, they did the same thing with a song where they just chose a song. And in one area you would hear highlighted, you could hear the, the rest of the music, but really you could hear the, the saxophone. And then you walk over and you can really hear the piano 
I, I think I'll probably post some video that I shot of that uh, on my Facebook page if anybody wants to go and look. I haven't done it yet, so I'll do that maybe tomorrow or later today. Uh, one of the two. It depends on how much work I have to do, <laughs> which should be a lot because I've been gone. Um, but it's, it's it's really phenomenal. So it is uh, the coolest venue, entertainment venue in the world. I had a buddy at work say uh, he's a big U2 fan. And I'm a U2 fan, but I'm not a big U2 fan. I don't know all the songs. But I was like, he said, I, I got a ticket to go see, two tickets to go see U2. My wife doesn't want to go. I think he's dragged her to too many U2 shows over the years. And uh, he said, do you want to go? And I said, you know what? I do want to go. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Well, and go you lived in Las Vegas. I, you yeah, went yeah. to UNLV. You have right. a connection to the area. Yeah. Um, I, I was just to UNLV. because of the venue, the <clears throat> size of the venue, sold out crowd. You two. I mean, that's like a world known band. And I was a little nervous, which I'm typically not. So that's why I, I was nervous that I was nervous. I'm like, why am I nervous? <laughs> and then... What I meant is I did know when you were coming home, but then your flight got delayed. So then he missed his connection. It was the whole thing. I've already told the good people, the Ozarks, because you were supposed to be on the show with me on Friday and you weren't. So that's what happened. Yeah, I got back. Uh, we, well, we missed the connection in Dallas. So, and the next connection wasn't until the next morning. Uh, so we just rented a car and drove from Dallas to Springfield, got home at six in the AM. So just missed the podcast. Yeah. Anyway, um, speaking of, getting home at 6 a.m. and missing the podcast. Um, on his way home from Dallas, he totally, um, like, kind of usurped our date by going on his own individual date to Bucky's. Um, and he went in Texas. See, this is what happened. Last week, I was like, hey, I think I'm going to Bucky's, and I'm going to take the kids, and I'm going to have a party. And Ethan's like, don't go. We'll go on a date. It's going to be great. I'm I said, don't go me. without me. We'll all go. Don't go without me, my love, my bride. <laughs> and then we get, he gets home on whatever morning. And I'm like, Hey babe, when you get off work today, let's go to Bucky's. And he's like, um, there's something I got to tell you. I accidentally went to Bucky's while I was driving home from Dallas. I, I was like, literally... what in the world? You told me to wait for you. So I waited for you and you went. And he was like, I did. But in my defense, we had to stop and there happened to be a Bucky's in that place. And so he did it. Well, what's crazy is that we were supposed to go to Bucky's together as a family on Friday or Saturday. And, uh, literally the night before we're driving at midnight and we hadn't eaten, uh, since, uh, noon. <clears throat> so we're starving and we got long drives. So we're going to eat. And everything was closed. So we we literally drove by a Bucky's and he's like, Well, I guess we can go here. And I said, Oh man, I'm hungry. Let's go get a brisket sandwich. <laughs> so that's what we did. So sorry that's about right. that. I, I uh listen, I'm beat over you it. To it. I forgive you, you. I'm over it. I don't care. Yeah, clearly. Because we still got to go on our date. I also had the brisket sandwich. It was amazing. I had the potato <laughs> chips, they were amazing. I had a Dr. Pepper and I don't really drink pop. So Soda. it was not amazing. But I mean, if you love Dr. Pepper, if you drink pop, maybe you think it's the greatest. But I actually thought it was weak Dr. Pepper because I was like, oh, I haven't had a pop in so long. This is going to be amazing. And then it well, didn't burn on the way down. Like <clears throat> I was like, mm, no, not the Dr. Pepper I remember. So, well, I know people have been waiting for me to go to Bucky's because I talk so much about Wally's, which is up in St. Louis. Fantastic convenience store. Same idea. Same type thing. Uh, so now I can compare Bucky's to Wally's, and here are my comparisons: the brisket sandwich and the barbecue at Bucky's is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. They, they I mean they they cook it right there. You see them cutting it up, chopping it. It was uh, a delight. I had that two days in a row. <laughs> the gas pumps in Springfield, there were 120 of them, and it was cheap gas. I don't know if that will continue. But it was very reasonable gas. I hope it continues because, you know, it will make people drive out there and get gas. <clears throat> Those are the two things that Bucky's has over Wally's. And they have cute Christmas decorations. But here, yeah. That, that, I mean, yeah. I wasn't buying any because I, that's not, I'm not given to buying decor. Um, however, if I was in the market for cute Christmas decorations, like if you are, I would say you should check it out because it was very cute. 
But I don't, in my opinion, a truck stop, not a truck stop, a, uh, a, st- a highway stop. Is no, not think the Cracker place. Barrel. Think Cracker Barrel, everybody. Right. That's not the place for home decor, in my opinion. No, you can get some there. cute things there. But that shouldn't anyway. be there. It shouldn't be there. Here's, 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 let me tell you what I like about Wally's in the time I have remaining. Uh, Wally's has pizza. Bucky's did not have pizza, which was a shock to me because why would you not have pizza? It, it, it's, I mean, regular gas stations have pizza. Yeah, you can make pizza. People love pizza. So I was shocked that they didn't have pizza. Uh, Wally's has good pizza. Wally's also has their own ice cream. They make their own ice cream. And uh, uh, at least two of the three kids in our family said the best ice cream they ever had was at Wally's in St. Louis. It was uh, gooey butter cake ice cream. And it was really, really fantastic. So they didn't make their own ice cream. Wally's also makes their own popcorn right there in front of you, like movie theater popcorn. And they get have different flavors of it. You can mix and match. It's a delight. It smells fantastic when you walk in. I also like that it's a, Wally's is a fun store. Uh, the color scheme between the two is night and day. The Wally's color scheme is a million times better than beige. Beige. I feel like you're doubling down against Bucky's, and I don't appreciate it. No, Bucky's I like is Bucky's. is now local. Bucky's just, is now local, sir. I'm I feel like you're local. stepping on the toes of local business. Yes, you are. No. Yes, I'm they not. are. I'm yes, not. I want. Yes, I'm sir. being honest. And I'm, out of the two of us, I'm being honest. And to be honest with you, good folks <laughs> at the Ozarks, I felt like he had a little bit of chip on his shoulder. I was like brushing off his shoulders the whole time we were there. Well, and I did go they in. had a buck. They had a blown up beaver with buck teeth. It's the cutest blown up beaver I've ever seen. We took pictures in front of it. It was lovely. The kids had a blast. Um, and the I mean, the place was insanely packed like it felt like a destination Bucky's it felt like a destination are, uh, yeah, i felt Bucky's like it did, delivered um bucky's so did not have bubbly that's true and that. right i can't explain that uh so i'm not saying bucky's is bad i enjoy bucky's <laughs> i'll go back to bucky's but here's what i want you to do when you're in the st louis area it's in fenton just outside st louis on 44 you drive right past it where the White Castle is, the same exit. It's the best exit in the state. And Ethan um, is a native St. Lucian. Um, you go to Wally's and just give it a shot. They have a bakery. They have jerky. They have drinks. They have all the stuff, all the stuff. And it's a little more uh, road trip friendly. They've got funny stuff like bumper stickers that are funny and things like that. So anyway, there you go. I, I do like Bucky's. But I've also two, been to both. I prefer Bucky's. End of story. All right. Let us well, know. We ran, in, we ran into a priest while we were there who was wearing a, a Wally's hat. And he heard us. It was actually the highlight about, of my trip. I was like, excuse me, sir. Are you a priest? <laughs> Ethan looked <laughs> yeah, at me what like, gave it away, are you collar? ignorant? What gave it away? Um, but I've never talked to a priest. And he was lovely. He was lovely. Um, he was and lovely. And he was a Wally's he guy. He said of his friend, he was like, I'm with my friend and I'm trying to figure out if my friend loves Jesus or loves Bucky's more. And I think it might be Bucky's because she was like, you know, had her like pom poms out. She was ready. She had a cart at a, she had a, cart at a gas station, a yeah. cart. I got to give it to her. Stuff. She was, she's a super fan and I, she's I appreciate committed. a fan. You know, I don't, I don't I also, care if we root for the same team. I appreciate a fan. I, I need some people uh, I enjoyed, with passion in my life. So I enjoyed his Wally's hat. I should have had a Wally's something on or other on. Yeah, uh, yeah, anyway, the, the it priest. Fun. It was fun. We had a good time. We're happy to have Bucky's here for sure. Had on a Wally's <laughs> hat. It was pretty great. Um, I wonder if that guy's watching us. I don't know. No, he's from out of he's from out of town. Oh wait, no, he's from out of town. That's right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, everybody, thanks for if you're still with us, you are a saint, <laughs> as it turns hey, out. Hey, they've missed me. I'm, we're on for 24 minutes now. Nobody they, missed they, you. They, they I missed did. Me. I, was gone. I certainly did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All um, right. Have a great day. We'll see you on Tuesday. Until tomorrow. Bye. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather, sponsored by Scooter's Coffee. Here's your host, meteorologist Abby Dyer. Hello, everybody. It is Monday, December 18th, and we are waking up this morning. And it's really cold outside. We've got temperatures in the 20s in a few spots just below the freezing point. And I've got some bad news and some good news for you this week. I guess I'll start with the bad news because today is kind of the bad news. 
Uh, it's going to feel terrible outside today. Uh, we are not starting off the new work week on a very nice note at all. Uh, here's the good news. It is going to be the coldest day of the week. So we don't have a whole lot of really cold weather to deal with as the week goes on. But today, if you're going to be out and about doing some last minute Christmas shopping, just getting the kids to school and home, brutally cold. I mean, really thick jackets necessary today. Add the layer of gloves. High temperatures will remain in the 30s and it comes with a northwest wind at about 20 miles an hour. Overall, though, nice conditions this week before Christmas. Today is just kind of uh, the brutal one. We had this dry cold front pass through. And what I mean by that is no rainfall came along with it. A few snow flurries, uh, not out of the question early this morning. So if you either see a few flakes or if you hear about some reported in the area or in the state of Missouri, don't be surprised by that. I think we could see them, especially near the boot heel where there's a bit better moisture. That dry frontal boundary could be just enough to squeeze out a few snowflakes. Not expecting impact from that. Uh, the big impact for us is that it's cooler today. High temperatures only in the 30s. Northwest wind at 10 to 20 miles an hour. So bundle up on this Monday. And this is going to mean elevated fire weather conditions for us too. We have really dry air in place. That cold front knocking the dew point temperatures down into the teens. So the dry air combined with the dry ground and the gusty winds, not a good setup for fire danger. And believe it or not, that's actually sometimes the highest risk in the wintertime here in the Ozarks when things are relatively dry for us. I want to show you a look uh, at the surface map this morning because it shows that very uh, dry cold front that's pushing through the region. For most, uh, no precip is going to be in the forecast, but I am expecting that we hold on to the cool temperatures and we're going to keep that northwest wind through much of Tuesday as well. As we head into Wednesday, that's when the better news is in the forecast. Temperatures start to creep back up again. We'll be above average. And as we head into the holiday weekend, things are looking very warm in the Ozarks. We're talking 50s for highs. That's well above average for this time of the year. Also for the holiday weekend, I've got rain chances in the forecast. They begin on Thursday, and it looks like right now Thursday night into Friday will be the best chance for rain, but I'm holding on to a chance for rain on Saturday and Sunday and even Monday of the Christmas holiday itself. That's still several days away, so don't change any plans based on that forecast. But just know if you're traveling, you're staying local, the temperature will be warm enough to support rainfall only. I'm not expecting a white Christmas, but there could be some rain kind of making travel not so pleasant across the Midwest. So it's something to keep in mind as we get closer to that holiday weekend. We are rain free though today, tomorrow, even as we head into Wednesday and most of the daylight hours on Thursday, I have dry weather conditions. The bummer in the forecast is that today it's only going to be 38 for the high temperature, really a chilly start to the day. Uh, and we're going to see low temperatures tonight back into the teens again. It'll be a cold start on Tuesday morning. We start this gradual warm up though. I've got us back at 46 degrees on Tuesday. By Wednesday, we're in the mid 50s. And by Thursday, there could be places out near 60 degrees again. Late in the day is when Thursday uh, rain chances return to the forecast. So keep that in mind, even though we get the warmth, we also get some unsettled weather with some rain returning to the forecast. Around the country, here's what's making headlines strong thunderstorms for the East Coast today. Just some brutal weather in Florida. And over the weekend, I was seeing a lot of videos from cruise ships out over the ocean. Oh my gosh, it looks horrible. Turbulent weather. Um, really terrible time to cruise if you're heading to the Caribbean. It was a rough couple of days and Florida had some severe thunderstorms as well. Still expecting really high wind threats along the East Coast today. That's going to be a headline that you'll see on national news. Also unsettled weather for the West for the next two days. Unsettled though. Nothing that's going to be extreme. And then we see the entire country remaining more mild than normal, really, as we head into this holiday week. And that's going to be uh, a headline for us because temperatures will be approaching 60. As I mentioned, that happens as early as Thursday for us. All right. It is time for the Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather Brain Twister question for the day. And uh, before we get there, I have to welcome our special guests on Christmas week. It's a holiday week. Welcome back, Joseph, to Hello. Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Thanks, Thanks for getting for up early with back. us. Uh, of course, anytime. Yes. Well, those of you that listened to the podcast last week, you know that I've been kind of on this theme of doing Christmas-related brain twister questions. We're continuing the trend this week. So we're going to do the same thing. Joseph, I'll give you the question that I left everybody with on Friday. 
And then I'll give you the one for tomorrow. I won't give you the answer to tomorrow's, but I will answer it for today. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let me pop up that question. This is what I left everybody with last week. You're a bit of a movie buff, but you don't watch a lot of Christmas movies. That's true. Uh, At least the second part is. I kind of ask to... Well, I guess I just mean you know all the actors and the actresses. Like you, I feel like you know a good deal amount about movie culture, uh, but maybe not Christmas movie culture. Yeah. In fact, uh, I hate to out myself like this to everybody, but I have not seen A Christmas Story. What? Like, I know what it is. Uh, Are you serious? I, know you have I did to be not know that about you. With a Red Rider BB gun, but I. Uh, I are you not joking? Seen a Christmas story. I'm not. All joking. right. Um. Well, I know what your plans for the evening are. <laughs> first of all, what? How did? How did we not know this? That's crazy. Um. I know what we're doing tonight, and. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I guess maybe if you only know the, kind of like the main jokes, you probably have seen like the leg lamp. Yeah. But you don't really get it. Yeah. I know all the cultural things about it. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, do you know the, the name? Red Rider BB gun, the leg lamp. Okay, uh, well, the question is. Isn't that the is, one where they lick the pole? Yes, the sure pole? is. Yeah. Okay, you're aware of that scene. I'm aware of it. We're going to piece this puzzle together for you. Okay. That's happening tonight, <laughs> 8 p.m. You're watching the Christmas story. Uh, but it's a date. okay, take a stab at this question anyway. Okay. What is Ralphie's, that's the main character. What is Ralphie's little brother's name in the movie, A Christmas Story? Do you think it is A, Roger, B, Randy, C, Robert, or D, Ryan? Mm, that's tough. I actually did know Ralphie was was the main character, and I have no clue about this. But uh, I just feel, I'm feeling, I'm feeling Roger or Robert, Roger, Robert. Let's go with uh let's go with Roger. You're going Roger? Yeah, I'm trying to read your face. I don't like that reaction. Yeah, sorry, you are not yeah. correct. But a Aww. lot of our guessers were correct. It is B Randy. Randy. Randy and Ralphie. And aren't those cute little sibling names? Sure. Their yeah. last name is Parker. Did you know that? I did not. All right. Well, you'll learn. All right. Maybe you'll uh do better at this one. This is also a Christmas movie trivia question that I'm giving to everybody for tomorrow. What is the highest grossing Christmas movie of all time? Do you think it is A, Elf, B, The Grinch, C, Home Alone, or D, The Polar Express? Highest grossing. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Elf. Going Elf? Yeah, Will Ferrell, superstar, you know, it's the modern era. Modern it's all marketed day. Yeah. heavily. And uh, yeah, he was already a star when that came out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Elf. Okay, he's going Although, A. clearly elf. Christmas movies, not <laughs> my forte. My own wife is ridiculing me. On, I, I mean, I have to life. correct that right away. <laughs> yeah. have, okay, wait. No, that's I on guess, me. Have you that's seen these me. movies? I know you've seen Elf. Yeah, with you. And I know you've seen The Grinch because I watched that uh-huh. over the weekend. And I also watched Polar Express already this year. Uh, I haven't watched po- Home Alone yet this year. Have you seen Home Alone? I have always loved Home Alone. Ask me anything about Home Alone except okay. maybe ha- <laughs> whether it was the highest grossing Christmas movie. Of okay, all time. maybe I'll come Don't up with a. That. Okay, I'll come up with a Home Alone related question Love for everybody later this week. Good, please do. I'll show back up. Well, okay. So, have you seen? Yeah, you have. Okay, you've seen the Polar Express, the Grand Elf. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've seen them all. And okay, so I've Joseph's going A Elf. You can submit your guess at AroundTheOzarks.com. Uh, the gift here, you don't want to miss out on it. It's 20 bucks to Scooter's Coffee every single day. That's what we're giving away. Uh, and last week, I want to give a big shout out to Sarah, Debbie, Kathy, and Ginger. Congratulations. Those were our winners from last week. And you can be a winner too. So just head to the website, submit your guess. Can I? You, I think so. Can I win? Am I eligible? Well, you'll have to go to the website. You can't just like say it on the podcast. I'm not going to do it. I love scooters. I'll, <laughs> I'll take scooters anytime. I'll have to check with the team on your eligibility. But uh, just so everybody knows, like we are very serious about this and I do not share my questions in advance. We don't talk about it. Clearly. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is this is by the book. Uh, I'll check with the team. But uh, submit your guess, everybody. Um, you can do that over at AroundTheOzarks.com. Thank you, Joseph, for waking up early with us this morning. And I will catch everybody early tomorrow morning on Around the Ozarks. Make sure you submit your guests. And uh, also check out the website for weather information all day long. We've got you covered up to the minute. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll catch you tomorrow.